नमस्कार मैं डॉक्टर मनोज तिर्की आप सबों को आज के इस सेशन में स्वागत करता हूं आज का जो सेशन का टॉपिक है इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी 2020 आज के सब्जेक्ट एक्सपर्ट हैं प्रोफेसर संतोष पांडा डायरेक्टर स्टाफ ट्रेनिंग एंड रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ डिस्टेंस एजुकेशन इसके अलावा इससे पहले ये बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण रोल अदा कर चुके हैं एज चेयरमैन नेशनल काउंसिल फॉर टीचर एजुकेशन इसके अलावा इन्होंने डायरेक्टर एसोसिएशन ऑफ इंडियन यूनिवर्सिटीज का रोल भी अदा कर चुका है सो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू दिस वीडियो प्रेजेंटेशन दिस इज इन फैक्ट अ टेलीकॉन्फ्रेंसिंग प्रेजेंटेशन एस वी लाइव विद इंटरैक्टिव चैट फैसिलिटीज अवेलेबल दिस इज द फर्स्ट डे ऑफ द 10th बैच ऑफ एनईपी पीडीपी नेशनल ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम अप्रूव्ड बाय यूजीसी एंड दिस इज बीन रेटिफाइड बाय द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एजुकेशन गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया and this is a national program and uh, you should feel proud that you are part of this prestigious program i'm professor panda uh, i'm very happy to make a presentation on the first day um on nep 2020 its implementation for in july 2020 nep national education policy 2020 was rolled out in the country subsequently especially university grants commission and many regulators including national apex body in business learning like igno they have all uh, um, proceeded towards devising strategies for implementation the university of delhi has rolled out the four year undergraduate program already with the first semester admission in the regard in national open university has gone ahead almost all the aspects or recommendations of the nep 2020 for their implementation quite a few programs will be presented subsequently by our esteemed colleagues uh who touch upon and uh, with case studies from it now also including skilling of the nibir program four year undergraduate program technology and about learning and skilling and so on and so forth let me proceed because uh, during this period 2021 was uh, covid time 2022 in fact universities and colleges they moved ahead with the a strategization especially development of institutional development plan or formulation of that and uh, for 5 years and uh, which was basically meant for the implementation of nep 2020 in in between in 2022 more specifically especially the second half of 2022 a lot of developments have taken place quite a few institutions have taken initiative in the implementation of nep 2020 the regulator especially the university grants commission and the vocational regulator ncbet national council for vocational education and training under ministry of skilling and entrepreneurship they have come forward quite a few developments that i will share with you the cross border education delivery and uh, quite a few things that uh, i would touch upon which are based on the uh, the, the important recommendations of nep 2020 so friends let me proceed Uh, with the 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 concern that we have as teachers and uh, uh, college and university teachers so also administrators and other people concerned with nep 2020 whether they are operating at the grassroots level or the national apex level all are concerned with what you see on your screen multidisciplinary education which is the foundation of the nep 2020 to increase uh, uh, employability as well as the wider perspective of knowledge understanding in diverse areas and including 21st century skills holistic education physical mental emotional ethical and spiritual uh, joining together for varieties of courses activities especially student activities including field studies um, and discussion seminars and so on and so forth um, which will be addressing holistic education multiple entry multiple exit and uh, therefore academic bank of credit i will discuss about that and uh, the recently uh, declared the national credit framework by ncbet and university grants commission and national credit framework 2022 i will discuss about that this also provides for multiple entry and exit as well as academic bank of credits and which also proposes that there will be midway course correction for students who can shift from one stream or one area of study to another area of study blended learning is uh, is is the issue today because the entire higher education has gone blended um, at least today 40% of credit hours a student can take from the soim online courses or books uh, uh, and 60% from one's own university or college 
So blended learning has already, I will touch upon that. Educational acceleration for the gifted, if the student can complete a course of study, a program of study before its uh, minimum time required, could it be possible? Second, that uh, a student who is gifted can handle two programs at the same point of time and can take a dual degree within the same duration of the study. Recognition of prior learning is a most important issue today and therefore horizontal vertical mobility between uh, vocational education and general higher education has been proposed and National Credit, uh, National Credit Framework 2022 has almost dealt with this and worked out formulations that how to recognize prior learning and therefore do recognize credits, uh, learning as credits and, and transfer those credits into one's own kitty so that the student is not able to, is not required to do those credits and complete the rest of the credits and take the degree. Equivalence of courses and qualifications because uh, every university is offering diversified uh, uh, programs, uh, degrees, uh, certificate, diploma, but equivalence through association of Indian universities, equivalence of courses were there, but now equivalence of programs and equivalence of uh, qualifications. Qualification means the, the completion of a, a particular duration of study with specified learning outcomes which are assessed based on certain framework which the national credit framework has proposed will be leading to a certificate diploma or degree and therefore that degree will be equivalent to any degree which is offered nationally or that degree or diploma is offered internationally by overseas institutions. Mobility between general and higher education as I have already specified Vocational education and general higher education, these two streams are running almost parallel, except that there are skilled universities and then the BVOC, Bachelor of Vocational Education, is offered by University Grants Commission, uh, recognized by University Grants Commission and offered by quite a few universities, except that the vocational education and general higher education are not talking to each other. And therefore, it is becoming very difficult for vocational students to acquire uh, degrees and for general higher education students to acquire skill-oriented courses towards their employability and future employment. We will discuss about that. There have been certain developments uh, during the past years. Now, NEP 2020, what it talks about that multidisciplinary institutions and multidisciplinary courses of programs and departments. There are almost 13,000 plus institutions have been noted by NEP 2020 as stand-alone institutions. Either they are offering one program of study, one specified discipline area, or they have been offering, uh, uh, they, they, they have been isolated from uh, different uh, uh, other disciplines uh, within the institution. So a single program institution or an institution which is not accommodating other disciplines within that institution including a college. Of course, a college generally has multi-departments and therefore it is a multidisciplinary institution, but there are many, 13,000 institutions. I can at least talk about teacher education. A large number of institutions, either one single teacher education programs or they have been operating uh, without any, any support from a college or university and therefore a four-year uh, integrated teacher education program would necessarily uh, require that uh, the education department functions within a multidisciplinary college or, or university with multi-university departments and therefore an integrated BSc, BA or BA, BA could also be possible. This is equally applicable to other disciplines also because a student from one discipline when uh, in, in multidisciplinarity and multiple entry and exit would like to take courses from other disciplines would find it very difficult because it is, their, their disciplines do not really exist. But certainly one can take, we will discuss, one can take also because of the cluster institutions that NEP 2020 has proposed, that institutions from the same city, that one is functioning in the morning, the other one in the evening, for instance, a student can take a course from another discipline from the evening college or the evening shift of another college. So it is talking about moving to larger multidisciplinary universities and higher education institutions, clusters that I described, and uh, therefore uh, uh, regarding the structure of higher education. Three types of institutions it is proposed, as you know, that uh, research universities, teaching universities, 
and multidisciplinary autonomous colleges. All colleges will be gradually converted into autonomous colleges and they have to become non-single discipline based or multidisciplinary institutions. There will be universities which will be basically focusing on teaching but also they will do research based on the students' research work and some of the research projects by the university professors. And there will be basically multidisciplinary research universities and they will be focusing more on research but also there will be something like an undergraduate teaching, for instance, IISC, Bengaluru, for instance, was a research-based institution which uh, at one point of time started thinking of and therefore offered undergraduate program in science. So therefore, the, the, the research output could also be transferred to, in terms of teaching and learning to the students. And therefore, students' projects could also be based on the professor's research with the institution has been doing. And IIC has been the top most ranking institution in the country and which is also in international ranking as appearing as the, as the number one institution in the country. Affiliated colleges to become multidisciplinary uh, uh, academic institutions or multidisciplinary uh, uh, colleges. Uh, cluster colleges will be there and university colleges will be there. So university colleges will be not affiliated but constituent colleges or campus colleges. There will be affiliated colleges, affiliated colleges will be gradually transforming into independent or autonomous colleges or institutions with multi-departments and there will be multi-disciplinary uh, um, universities because the single discipline universities as you know that the medical or petroleum or any, any quite a few the professional areas especially they have in single discipline universities they have also to accommodate multi-disciplines as you know IITs, IIMs for quite some time they have accommodated the humanities and social sciences to, to expand their multidisciplinarity and for other benefits including holistic development of the graduates of the human personality and including their happiness skills and social and life skills and employability skills. Uh, the NEP has suggested that one can consider more that there can be common, depart common departments like language, literature, music, philosophy, ideology, art, dance, theatre, education, mathematics, statistics, pure and applied sciences, sociology, economics, sports and translation, there could be quite a few more. And these, these disciplines would uh, contribute to holistic development would expand the horizon of the human potential, human understanding, worldview, and as well as contributing to employability, which is called 21st century skills today. You could, you could add on more departments to them, but these departments should gradually become common in colleges and universities. NEP 2020 talks about uh, the approach that one has to take, and uh, the approach has now been pointed out by the UGC document, which you should also go through, uh, which is talking about uh, training colleges, dual degree programs, and joint degree programs. Also, the other UGC document on um, multidisciplinary institutions, departments, and programs, of which I have fortunately become a part of the committee, but uh, it, it talks about a very wide-ranging transformation of institutions into multidisciplinary institutions, including research universities, teaching universities, and autonomous colleges. It proposes that there should be academic collaboration through higher education clusters. In a city, if there are five colleges, for instance, and two universities, they could join in, not that they're merging among each other or with another, but uh, they are joining in, allowing the students of one, one institution to take up courses from another institution. Of course, that should be, there should be a class of the timetable. The timetable has to be very different. And therefore, the, if the student is taking up courses from another institution, of course, one has to take up courses, join that, and also transfer credits and pay the fees for that. Simultaneously, a student can also take courses of study uh, outside one's own discipline or skill-based courses uh, or other related courses other than one's own discipline from distance learning, including this one. For instance, National Open University you know, is offering a course-wise registration as well as programs, uh, dual degree programs also. So a student can also take uh, admission uh, from IGNO in a particular course and transfer that credit to the, the, the main university or the college that one is studying. There can be merger of standalone institutions with multidisciplinary institutions or they convert themselves into multidisciplinary institutions. 
or like like for instance if you can add a department like education to to your existing department it also becomes multidisciplinary please go through the document of ugc multidisciplinary institutions and programs and departments in which uh, there has been a considerable discussion that how education departments would be established and which will not only contribute to multidisciplinarity but also it will contribute to innovations in pedagogy teaching learning ict assessment blended learning and so on and so forth and also these will be contributing to the implementation of nep 2020 and therefore take up the responsibility of continuing professional development vis-a-vis -vis nep 2020 multidisciplinary programs Standalone institutions, like there are many in education, management, law, engineering, they could collaborate with others to offer or convert themselves or merge with other institutions if they wish so. Four year dual degree bachelor's programs, like BA, BA, for instance, by cluster institutions or for those through this open and distance learning, one can also take up. So, uh, 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 two degree programs, like BA, BA. This is one way of saying a two degree program, but uh, it leads to one qualification called BA, BA or BSc, BA, for instance. But then one can also take up, which I will talk about that, one can take, take up at the same point of time a dual degree. So dual degree programs, the UGC regulation 2022 talks about that a student from one face-to-face -face university or campus university can take up a program of study through distance learning at the same point of time. National Open University like IGNO, they have also allowed that a student from IGNO can take up two programs of study through distance learning or online learning, provided there is a semester gap between the one degree program or the second degree program, simply because there should not be class of uh, examination dates. Um, uh, there would be a written MOU with partner institutions. Of course, this will be uh, carried out through MOUs or memorandum of agreement. So I talked about it now, two programs, undergraduate program, and we have 45 programs in two academic cycles, 45 programs in the basket. A student can choose any one or any two programs from these 45. Of course, as per UGC regulation, uh, PhD is not part of a dual degree program. So you cannot have one program of study and simultaneously continue PhD is not possible. Now a few minutes about national credit framework which has been very recently uh, 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 promulgated <coughs> by the skill ministry. Of course UGC is promulgated but prepared by the NCBET, National Council for Vocational Education and Training which simply says that the existing skill ministry national skill qualifications framework which was governing the skill courses in the country through sector skill council. National Higher Education Qualifications Framework of UGC, which is uh, uh, already implemented, and the National Skill Education Qualifications uh, School Education Qualifications Framework, which will be the national um, national curriculum framework at the school level, um, all will be subsumed under the National Credit Framework 2022. Please get hold of this document from UGC website and go through because it talks about the details of calculation of accreditation of prior learning, that uh, uh, how the, the formal, informal, non-formal, all three types of learning can be assessed, can be transferred to the kitty uh, in terms of credits. So credit value for the academic and skill courses at all levels, level one, say for instance, first year undergraduate, second year undergraduate, third year undergraduate, for instance, and the delivery modes, whether one is taking through online, distance, face-to-face -face, or blended, simply doesn't matter. There will be seamless credit transfer and equivalency. It talks about how to accumulate credits, how to transfer credits, and how the vocational education and general education e equivalency will be established, as well as how the credit transfer between general education and vocational education. From general education, one can shift to vocational education in the future, and from vocational education, one can also shift from to general education or while going to general education one can pick up a few vocational courses from the vocational stream or the vocational students can pick up some general courses from the general stream and there, there can be transfer. I'll give an example of uh, subsequently about the credit transfer. Unified credit framework for integration of all kinds of so the, the, the NCF 22 national credit framework 2022 talks about that. Please get hold of that document and go through. 
Again, NCF 2022 talks about learning is expressed in terms of credits. Credit, what is a credit by the way? The credit is nothing but the achievement of student learning outcomes irrespective of the modes of delivery that the student has gone through. The learning outcomes remain constant. The competencies, knowledge, attitude, skills that the student is learning and that is assessed through assessment, both formative as well as summative, whether one is going through face-to-face, -face, distance, online, or blended learning, it simply doesn't matter. So learning could be academic, learning could be vocational, and learning can be experiential. So it is talking about three kinds of learning. Learning which is academic, which is taking place uh, with the teacher or at a distance, vocational, skill-based, and experiential through experience or on the job training. That somebody, after first year of BEA, is taking a 40 credits, taking a certificate, and going out, joining the job, and coming back. And uh, uh, the, the, the two, three periods, uh, years of service that one has uh, 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 offered, that service experience could also be uh, transformed through assessment into credits, and those credit exemption could be given to the student when one is coming back to complete the second year. So one need not complete 40 credits. One can complete less than 40 credits because the other credits will be accredited from one's own experience. This is an excellent development which is happening internationally. We are very late to implement this, but this is how it is going to happen. So creditization, accumulation, storage, transfer, redemption is possible. Mobility within general higher education and vocational education <coughs> is also possible. <clears throat> and these would be operationalized through what is called an academic bank of credits. National Academic Bank of Credits is just like a bank. The institution should open its account and therefore its own students from 2022 onwards. Before that, the credit accumulation is not allowed. So from 2022 onwards, those students who have registered in Academic Bank of Credits, unless their institution is registered, the student cannot register. So the student who has registered in the Academic Bank of Credits will be going on accumulating credits from one's own college or university and credits by doing courses from other institutions through distance learning, through online learning, through so on, so on, and transfer those credits into one's own account in the ABC and the student can finally join together those credits and decide uh, how many credits that one has to spend to acquire a certificate or diploma or a degree. The rest of the credits will remain in the account and these credits will stand there for seven years. So within seven years, for the time being, it might increase in the future, may decrease, but hopefully increase in the future, that um, one can, uh, the surplus credits, at certain point of time later, one can continue certain more courses and join those credits and take another certificate diploma or degree. So the uh, operationalization will be through Academic Bank of Credits. For instance, right now, almost 30 lakhs, 3 million students have already registered, as of as till yesterday, have already registered in the Academic Bank of Credits, out of which almost 21 lakh students are from IGNO and 9 lakh, almost 10 lakh students are from other universities. And uh, in IGNO, it is increasing, but certainly other universities and colleges are coming forward, and your college and institutions should also come forward to register in Academic Bank of Credits, otherwise the students will not get a chance to do credit accumulation, deposit, and credit bhuktan means uh, uh, they cannot redeem the, redeem the credit, and credit transfer will not be possible, and their credits can also not be transferred if they are going to study outside the country. So uh, within the country and between countries, overseas and Indian higher education, this credit transfer is guaranteed. You could also go through a presentation made by a very detailed presentation with technical groups from ABC. I have listed down the URL for you, the UGC video, which is available. This is from YouTube. This is also available in UGC website. You could also go through for a detailed presentation, including technical presentation from the ABC group and the and the and the chairperson of uh, Chairman University Grants Commission. How the, how the credit will work out, the, the per year, uh, uh, please note it, that per year the credit is cons constant, that is 40 credits a year. 20 credits a semester and 40 credits a year, which should translate into 12 hours of teachers and students' work. 
So credit, what is a credit? Completion of a course of learning corresponding to a qualification. This qualification has been defined earlier through NSQF. Sometime back in National Higher Education Qualifications Framework and now the National Credit Framework 2022, the qualifications have been defined at different levels with certain standards. So therefore, I will talk about the calculation the, the way NCF has done, <clears throat> that students' learning will be transformed into credits. So accreditation of any learning subject to assessment, any learning would mean academic, vocational, and experiential. These three we have already talked about, academic, vocational, skill-based, and experiential on the job training. So courses, courses will be aligned with, aligned with the credit framework at a given level, and uh, that credit will define the competency and learning outcomes. So therefore, achievement of credit would mean achievement of those learning outcomes and competencies at certain levels, grade A, grade B, grade C, and so on and so forth. So how the credit levels have been defined? The National Skill Qualifications Framework had 10 levels, which the National Higher Education Qualifications Framework also got it, but now the National Credit Framework has reduced it to eight levels. So school education is up to level four, that simply means up to plus two senior secondary level four will be over. Undergraduate education will be 4.5 to 6. I will show an example. The postgraduate education 6 to 7. PhD is level 8. So combination of academic skilling, experience and learning, which will also include apprenticeship, internship, projects and so on and so forth, including debates, discussion, a whole lot of activities that take place on the campus by the students, they all will be translated into hours of work by the students and those hours of work will be translated into credits. So the credit, 40 credits a year, would simply doesn't necessarily mean that the teacher will be teaching 40 credits all the time. The 40 credits will include teachers teaching as well as a whole lot of students' activities which will be translated into credit hours. Fortunately, at the National Open University like IGNO, we say one credit is 30 student uh, uh, study hours, which includes the self-learning and a whole lot of activities that the student does. Almost the same thing is coming up here, except that it is dominated in the face-to-face -face by teachers teaching, but the students' activities will also join in to define the credit. So up to grade five, it will be almost up to 1,000 hours of work in a year, but from grade six onwards, it will be 1,200 hours. So 1,200 hours, 40 credits, that would simply mean 40 credits a year, that would simply mean 30 hours per credit. So at ICNO, for instance, we have been earlier talking about one credit 30 hours, but now one credit is 30 hours. But for calculation of teaching, one credit is 15 hours of teaching. The rest of the hours will come from the student's activities. So a student can take more, more than 1,200 hours, for instance. 1,200 hours is one degree. But this, or a certificate, because 1,200 hours per year at first year is a certificate. 1,200 hours for the second year is diploma. 1200 hours for the third year is the degree in a three year degree program. Another 1200 hours in the fourth year in a four year undergraduate program will be BA or BSc with results. So uh, uh, that I will show uh, immediately after this. So 1200 hours, more than 1200 hours a student can take, that would simply mean a student can do two degrees simultaneously. It is possible. So friends, one hour a theory, is equivalent two hours of practical, including field study, and three hours of experiential learning, on the job training, internship, or, 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 or kinds of things. So therefore, the, to conclude the national credit framework uh, and the calculation of credit points, please go through that document, which talks about in detail how especially the experiential learning uh, will be credited, uh, transformed into credits, and will be, will be, will be transformed to the student's kitty when after doing a job, one is joining the second year or third year or another degree program. Because one's credit has been accumulated, deposited in the Academy Bank of Credit. So one can draw from ABC and do a few more courses and complete another course of study or program of study. So undergraduate first year, level 4.5, credits 40, 40 is constant, level goes on increasing, therefore the credit points would go on increasing. So first year 4.5, 40 credits, 180 credit points. Second year, five level, 40 credits, 200 credit points. 
and you see uh, at uh, uh, CDL 7, PSD, um, level 8, 40 credits, so 320. So that simply means a one year of PSD is 320 points and a one year of undergraduate first year program is 180 points. So you can, you can now imagine because that PSD level is much higher, probably the highest than the first year undergraduate program. So friends, about National Higher Education Qualifications Framework, <coughs> which is now subsumed into, into the National uh, Credit Framework 2022, but then I will discuss very briefly about this because this text talks about multiple entry and exit. How level four undergraduate program, 40 credits, one can complete, go to the world of work, do a job, and come back for level two to complete a diploma after a few years, another 40 credits, come back and go back to work, come back to bachelor's degree to do a three-year program, another 40 credits, put together 120 credits, and so on and so forth, up to PhD level. So how this under, especially undergraduate, postgraduate curriculum is visualized, by the way, it talks about uh, flexible curricular structures, science, technology, engineering, art and mathematics education, now art has been added to STEM, instead of STEM, it is called now STEAM, industry academia linkages and therefore you know that for skill courses that you have to necessarily or the institutions have to necessarily involve the experts from the industry and such skill areas um, uh, which, is, which are now called the professors of practice. The professors of practice may not necessarily have a PhD degree, but they have certain years of experience in that particular area, which qualifies them uh, as professors of practice. And quite a few universities in this country have started appointing professors of practice full time, and their responsibility would develop skill-based courses, as well as join uh, other programs of study to facilitate employability uh, and uh, professional development of their graduates. Multiple entry and exit, I have already discussed, Community engagement and service is a compulsory part. Research and internship, environment value-based education, language, art and culture, and skill courses are compulsory. These are all within the formulation of multidisciplinarity. How it happens, for instance, very recently, the UGC has finally come out after deliberations, has finalized and circulated for all of us the, the four-year undergraduate program structure. It talks about 120 credits, when it was a three-year program, or it is a three-year program, uh, and it will be 160 credits when uh, it is a four-year bachelor's degree program with research. And four-year bachelor's degree program with research, 160 credits, one can directly join PhD, provided one has secured 75% score in that, in that four-year program. So Fred's the, the discipline measure, which is uh, uh, in three-year program is 60, in four-year program is 80. Uh, minor streams, uh, multi-interdisciplinary uh, within that, related discipline, earlier it was 24, now 32. Multidisciplinary from other disciplines, nine, in fourth year is also nine. Ability enhancement, eight credits each. Skill enhancement, nine credits each. Value-added courses of diversified areas, including 21st century skills, uh, six to eight credits. Summer intensive, two to four credits. And research and project, which is research is compulsory for a four-year program, and therefore in a three-year program it's nil, and for a four-year program it is 12 credits. So put together, a three-year program is 120 credits, which is final, and uh, four-year program is 160 credits, but for your reference, I must mention that the University of Delhi has already implemented 176 credits four-year undergraduate program, and the first semester has already started. So friends, to conclude this credit and ABC, what will happen, that they are, what is going on, that the college and university, 15 hours of classroom teaching plus students' activities will be considered as credits, Open distance learning already, I said, 30 hours of student learning was there. The semester, 20 credits per semester, 40 credits a year. In semester, one credit is one hour of teaching per week over a 12 to 14 week semester. 12 to 14 weeks, we have a teaching in a semester. So one credit is one hour of teaching or two hours of practical or two hours of distance learning per week or over a 12 to 14 week semester. That's how now, for, once for all, the credit definition has been fully standardized. The academic bank of credits, 
the, the, this, non, this is a national academic depository, uh, your institution and students will register. And the URL that I have mentioned earlier, please go through that for a detailed discussion technically how you will be joining and operating the Academic Bank of Credits. And the students, they should register in Academic Bank of Credits. They accumulate and deposit their credits, which is valid for seven years, as I said. And 50% minimum credits will be required for an institution to award a degree. The rest of the 50, a student can from diversified disciplines, other, uh, other institutions, through distance learning, through SOIM, but 50% minimum is required for an institution, for that institution to offer a certificate diploma degree. So friends, for your understanding, I must say, that uh, curriculum uh, has been divided between theory, practicum, and intensive, and therefore any curriculum and course of study that you are going to design, they have to be based on theory, practicum, and intensive. <clears throat> Medium of instruction, as you know, that of late, uh, uh, quite a few developments have taken place that besides English, that uh, the medium of instruction would be the national language Hindi or Rajabhasa Hindi and the regional languages. Textbooks in the Hindi and regional languages, including Bengali, Gujarati, Kinara, Marathi, Oriya, Tamil, Telugu, have already been uh, being translated or being developed in diversified areas, including medical, engineering, IT, management, and other professional areas. Examinations in Hindi and regional languages, textbooks in regional languages, different uh, companies or publishing houses are there. And uh, next six to 12 months, a nodal agency will be created, self-learning materials in regional languages by the National Open University, GNO and State Open Universities are already there. In the future, friends, we are going to have blended teaching learning. No system will have either full time or full, full distance or full online. And therefore, certain credits will be getting into student self-learning based on open education resources or textbooks with mentoring support by the teacher. There will be face-to-face -face interaction, presentation, lectures, discussion, hands-on, and there will be online collaborative activities, projects, and problem-based learning, project-based learning, portfolio-based learning, case-based learning, for instance, would happen in the future. Different kinds of blending is possible. You can stop the video and see sometime later. What is being proposed by the assessment agency, including NAC, in, um, NIRF, or International Key US, or Shanghai, or Times ranking, international ranking of universities, they are looking forward to four kinds of evidences from us as teachers or administrators or institutions. A curriculum mapping or concept mapping of all the concepts involved in that curriculum course or program of study, that mapping of that, which is translated into learning outcomes. And those learning outcomes are matched with the student activities that the student will undertake to achieve those learning outcomes. And finally, what formative and summative assessment rubric would be there that which will assess those learning outcomes. These four prominent evidences are necessary in our curriculum design. So far assessment is concerned, NEP is talking about free. We have been doing almost two, but the last one is very prominent. We have been doing assessment of learning, which is summative, and that summative learning will also diversify to include varieties of assessment strategies. Please go through the UGC document on examination and assessment and evaluation which talks about diversified ways with examples that we can undertake even summative assessment, term and assessment, or year end assessment. Formative assessment through varieties of activities, not only assignments, but also varieties of activities, student activities, a formative assessment can also take place. Preferably, if it is 50 50, 50% 50 formative and 50% summative. In fact, if the summative can be reduced, it will be highly appreciated. What it talks about is the third kind, assessment as learning. So what would simply mean that the students are engaged in activities, so for instance, doing a portfolio or a case, for instance, of a project-based learning, and the teacher is also assessing simultaneously. So while the student is doing that activity, assessment is also taking place. Assessment for the teacher for awarding grade, and assessment for the student also that while doing that activity, they are also assessing themselves and improving their learning. These three kinds of assessment would come to um, uh, implementation. 
Friends, so far internationalization is concerned, as you already know, that there is a cross-border educational delivery of different kinds. Campuses can be established elsewhere. The campuses can, overseas institutions can come to India to establish their campuses. They can offer full-time. They, they will not offer any distance learning program. They have to offer offline programs of campus-based programs. So courses and programs to be promoted from India, in geology, in the language, IO system, medicine, yoga, arts, medicine, uh, music, history, culture, modern India, ancient India, all these they have to be promoted also insofar as our curriculum is concerned. UGC regulation has come up in 2023, setting up and operations of foreign higher education institutions in India 2023, which is under discussion, which will be finalized very soon. It proposes drastic changes insofar as internationalization of cross-border education delivery is concerned. Of course, though those institutions will come to India, almost 500 have been proposed to come to India, top-ranking world universities they'll be coming. Indian universities will also be going abroad. There'll be autonomy in their mission and fee structure. They can hire faculty also. But UGC will be monitoring and doing inspection. There'll be full or partial need-based scholarships to the native students, disadvantaged students uh, from the rural areas is also possible uh, through endowment, through alumni donation, and through tuition revenue. These three have been proposed over there from which money will be generated and uh, the student scholarship will be given. They may take two years to set up their uh, system over here and there will be initial approval for 10 years after which it will be uh, 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 assessed again and uh, they cannot offer their programs online, they have to offer programs offline only. Movement of funds as per Foreign Exchange Management uh, Act uh, came out. Uh, 1999s because there will be a lot of uh, fee and movement of uh, uh, foreign exchange, uh, Indian uh, earning from uh, outside, outside institutes earning from India. So uh, that will be regulated by the FEMA and credits acquired abroad can be counted for award of a degree. And two institutions, one from overseas, one from India can also join in to award a degree. But finally, the Indian institution will award the degree if the, even if the student has done certain credits from outside, there will be credit transfer, but one institution will be. But within the country, that dual degree is very much allowed. In terms of research, finally, to conclude one or two minutes more, friends, for, uh, in so far research is concerned, NEP is talking about establishment of a National Research Foundation, which will be apex body for the, the, for the award of uh, research projects and uh, uh, our basic fundamental action research of diverse disciplines. Other research institutions would, of course, would, uh, continue to exist. Research as part of undergraduate education, as I said, the fourth year will be largely dominated by research. PhD, after completion of four-year undergraduate program, which will be directly uh, leading to a PhD program, research. But recently, it has come out that the Indian scientific publications have almost gone uh, up uh, seriously we were in seventh position in 2010 in terms of world scientific production, including, including citation, scientific research, intellectual property, and so on and so forth. We, in 2020, we are now in third position, and which we are still increasing. We might jump to second position. Now the second position is China, first is USA, and we might touch the second position. Patents in the last three years, from uh, 2511, 2018-19, we have almost doubled in 20, uh, uh, 2021, and the total research output in the last two decades, uh, these three organizations have contributed significantly, which others would also join in. IIT is almost 16%, CSIR 10%, and Central University is 10%. So finally, to conclude, friends, that continuing professional development is part of this implementation of NAP 2020, which is given to IGNO to implement that, and you are part of this exercise, and this exercise is going on. The continuing professional development, the summit platform, uh, the screenshots are available to you. Below left hand side is the Swam Prabha Live, which was inaugural uh, live conferencing by our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Nagasar Rao, so myself, uh, uh, left hand side, and Professor Parar, who is now Director, Center for Online Education. We joined uh, the Honorable Vice Chancellor to uh, uh, to offer that inaugural Swami Prabha Live conferencing. On the right hand side, you will find all the URLs that are given to you for registration, Swami, SP Live. You will find the introduction video, the summit, 
NEPPDP trial run video. The, all the videos that are available by national experts in the YouTube that also URL is given and course navigation is also given to get into the SOM platform. So friends, these are our modules available contributed by experts that when you get into SOM you will get hold of these modules contributed by national experts and especially the video program started from uh, uh, Dr. Kastu Rangan till uh, Professor Ramchandran, AIO Secretary General, NAC uh, Chairperson, Professor Avinas Pandey, uh, the uh, NCF, the N uh, National, Cur uh, National uh, Policy Committee members, Professor T.B. Kartimani, the NCRT Director, uh, Padmasri, Professor J.S. Rajput, who was also a member of the National um, Policy Framework Drafting Committee, Professor Sahasrabhade, who was Chairman uh, AICT, who is now the Chairman of the National Technology Forum, uh, which is a very powerful body to integrate all the technology in the country and so on and so forth. So these videos and the printed materials are available, so I stop here friends and if you have any questions, we would certainly like to tackle those questions, your questions and respond as, uh, uh, as uh, truly as possible, as practically as possible. Thank you, Professor Panda, for this wonderful presentation where you have provided a broad contour of the National Education Policy 2020.